three or a blot behind. So we're going to try and learn close to two blot. We're going to push. It's not hard, Gemara Baruch Hashem. Um, and it's actually fairly easy to remember. So uh, we're going to dive in. We're on the very bottom of Daf Chav Dal, and I'm at base, starting at a brand new Mishnah. And Emir Tzashem, if I have my way, we'll be going to Chav Vav Amud Beis at the new Mishnah. And it's okay if we don't get there, because as long as we make a, a good stride into that next Amud, then we're doing well. So it says the Gemara on the bottom of Chav Dal, Amud Beis, in a new Mishnah, as follows. Remember, we started out the Perek, Elu Metzius Shalov, Elu Metzius so we spoke about the first part of shallow. Of course, they're all blended because when something is not shallow, it's chayav lahachris, and when something is chayav lahachris, it's not shallow. They're all they're all two sides of one coin. But let's jump into this new mishnah. Ve'lu chayav lahachris. The following are cases where if I find an object, I have to make a hachraza. A hachraza in halacha is a public announcement. We'll learn details about this throughout the mesechta. It's a public announcement about the item that I found. Says the Gemara Matza Peros Bikli, if I find fruits that are inside a Kli, O Kli Kimoshu, or a Kli by itself, we assume that there are always imperfections, things that are unique about a Kli that make it worthy of having a simon. Um, Maos Bikis, O Kis Kimoshu, money, not money by itself, money that's in a wallet or the wallet itself, there too. It's a customizable thing. People know their own stuff. Uh, or tzibore peros, tzibore peros, if there's collections, plural of fruit, tzibore mo's, collections of monies, we'll have to discuss all of these. Rashi says, the Gemara mefarish simonaihu, o minion, o makom. You know, money in and of itself doesn't really have something that's so customizable uh, because a quarter is a quarter is a quarter. What you want to say is from 1973. So what? They minted thousands of quarters in 1973, so that's not a riot. So we'll discuss that in the Gemara. Turning to the top of Chav at Aleph, the Gemara says, Shlosha matbeos, zo, ze al gavze. When we have three coins that are stacked one on top of the other, that's a uniqueness in its presentation, as opposed to makom or as opposed to minion, anything like that. It's really a uniqueness in presentation. Krichos bershus harab, bershus hayachid. If we have a collection of things in bershus hayachid, vikikaros shel balabais, homemade bread, vikizet tzemer halakuchen mi beis ha'uman, uh, pieces of bread that are taken from the beis ha'uman. This is already different. That's already talking about something that's finished. It's not talking about a raw product. Raw wool, you can't tell. But my sweater is made out of wool, so it's a finished product. Not everybody has it, so therefore it has more of a simon. And it's actually a little bit more difficult today. Like if I were to buy 10 of these same sweaters from the store that I bought them from, they'd all look exactly the same. So we're actually in a bit of, we're, we're so good at our at our production lines, it, it's actually hard to tell because it's a, it's not a custom thing. It's a an adult small. <laughs> Come on, every adult small is going to look exactly. So we may actually have new shilas today because of how good our technology is. Kade uh, yayin v'kade shemen, and as well barrels of wine and a uh, barrel, uh, pitchers of wine and pitchers of oil. Hare elu chayav lahachris. So says our Mishnah. Top of chav hey amid aleph, opening at the Gemara, four lines down. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Sheakol Niyebed Baro. Oh. <clears throat> says the Gemara, in regards to the first case of our Mishnah, of the Peros and the Kli, we had said in the beginning of our Mishnah that if there are Peros in a Kli, or Peros in front of a Kli, so then the Peros in the first case would be Chayv Lahachris, and the Kli without the Peros would be Chayv Lahachris, same with money. Time of the Matzah Peros, Bekli, most Bekli. The only reason why we said that it's Chayv Lahachris is because they were found in containers. Hakli Ulefan of Peros, Kis Ulefan of Maos, However, if there was a container and the items of the container are no longer in the container, they're in front of the container, so then hare elu shelo. Those uh, are then not going to be chayev. Those are going to be hare elu shelo. You can keep those, unlike our Mishnah. And says the Gemara that we have a brisa, a brisa that supports this idea. Tanina lahad peros kisu of mos hare elu shelo. Same idea that the Gemara just uh, inferred was medayik from our Mishnah, that if you have a kli and there are no fruits inside the kli, no monies inside the wallet, but the fruits and the monies were in front of the pitcher and or the wallet, so then hare elu shelo, a diuk from our Mishnah, verified by a brisa. But the brisa keeps going. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble by continuing to talk. This brisa ends up causing a problem. Let's make a diuk. 
What if only Miksasan Bikli and Miksasan Al Gabi Karka? I had a basket. There were some apples in it and some apples in front of it. Miksasan Bikis and Miksasan Al Gabi Karka. You have some money in the wallet and some of it on the ground in front of the wallet. Chayav Lahachris. So this Brisa, which we did not bring for this purpose, we brought it for the Reisha to bring a Raya to the Diya Kramar Mishnah. But over here, we had another comment, and the Gemara says that this new comment is actually subject to debate. Because we have another brisa, we're in Minhu, twelve lines down, give or take chavhem and alf matzah davar she'ain bo simen. Let's say we find something that has no simen, and it's bitza davar she'yesh bo simen, but it's next to something that does have a simen. What's the halacha? Chayav lahachris. That's that's different than what we just said in the brisa. So we'll see why. Ba al simen. Uh, if a person showed up. Ba Baal Simon, Vinotal Eshalo, someone who knows Simon and comes and take his takes his item. Zacha, he gets it. And Hala, the other guy, uh Sha'in Bo Simon, he gets to keep that other item. So this is a stira because we see that there is an iteration of this case where we see that Hala Bidavar Sha'in Zacha Hala Bidavar Sha'in Bo Simon, that the other guy gets it. That's a stira to what the Brysa wrote in the second half of the Brysa. So Amar was a couple of different answers. One is talking about a barrel with flax. And in a case with a barrel with flax, had there been flax in the barrel, there would still be a remnant of the flax in the barrel. The barrel won't be totally clean. I got a haircut today. There's hair on all my clothes. You can't get rid of all of it. It's, there's always something. There's always a little cut. There's always a little something. So that's why when you're dealing with flax, that could be the case in the Brysa where we say that it's... Uh, it's all part of the same thing, and then he would not be able to keep it. But Habit Sana Upere, one's talking about a basket with oranges, with apples, with avocados. And when you dump that basket over, well, there's not even a remnant because the items you're dealing with are whole and they don't uh, fall apart typically as they roll out. So that will be the difference between them. And a quarter of the way down, Rapapa gives another answer. Rapapa Amar Hava Habit Sana Upere. Really, we're talking about, we're not talking about flax, which always leaves a remnant. We're talking about uh, a basket with fruit. It's different. If there's some apples left in the basket, while there are also some apples left in front of the basket, push it that they're all one. And then you can't say, If we say, the if all of the apples are outside of the basket, then that the apples in the basket have any connection to one another, and therefore, and the Gemara presents still another answer. It could be, that the uh, that the basket is hundred percent empty. Velokasha, ha de mahadre ape legabe piri. One is where the mouth, the opening of the basket, is toward the fruit, and ha de lo mahadre ape legabe piri. Obviously, we're talking about a basket that isn't like our typical laundry basket that has even sides. One side is lower, like a spout or some kind of opening to make it easier to pour. Under those circumstances, where it's easier to pour them out. We should therefore assume that the fruits that are in front of the basket are part of the basket, and therefore, chayav lahachris. Masha'en kain, if we're talking about a case where the lip, the opening of the basket was in another direction, so then we would not say that. And last but not least, oh, uh, yes, really, there is no opening of the basket that's near the fruit, velokasha, had at least the isle ugnin litsana, in one case, there is a rim to the basket, which makes it more difficult for the fruits to come out. And how the less la ognin litsana. Here too, we could see a distinction where we have a basket that's very easy for things to come out. Okay, more likely that something came out of the basket. It's not stam that the fruits are there in the baskets there. But when you have a basket that has like a, a like let's say this is my basket over here, and this has no no lip. But let's say I had a, a rim that would like that kind of was sub like set in about a half a centimeter, that rim would prevent everything from coming out. That would be the distinction. Again, a whole bunch of answers to the seeming stereo between the brysa we brought for entirely different purposes and uh, and a new brysa that we brought about uh, about the case of Miksasan Bikli, Miksasan Al Gabe Karka. That brings us halfway down to the two dots on Chav Hamad Aleph. We had said in our Mishnah, Tzibure Peros Vitzibure Mos, the problem is, Shamas Mina, Minyan Have Simen. It seems that Tzibure is a plural word, um, which implies that there's some type of volume uh, that makes it Hachraza worthy, right? Because what's the din in our Mishnah? If you look on the very bottom line of the previous Amud, 
at the end of that Mishnah there, it says, Tzibore Peoros and Tzibore Mos, and the Mishnah had concluded in such a case of Chayav Lahachres, which means that the pile itself must be based on its number, that it's being Machres. It says the Gemara, no, it's neat, it's Tzibor. It could just be one Tzibor Peoros. It could just be one little thing of Peoros. It could not necessarily plural. It says the Gemara, if that's true, Shom Asmina, that perhaps the reason in our Mishnah why we're saying Chayav Lahachres by this little uh, pile of fruits or vegetables is because makom habe simen. Says the Gemara, well, maybe I was wrong the first time. Tni tzibure peros. I could say, I don't really know what the Lashon is of our Mishnah. It's one little dot of ink, the Yud after the word tzibur. We don't know if it's tzibur or tzibure. And therefore, one of them might be true. We just can't bring a raya to which one is true in regards to our Mishnah. That brings us to the next two dots, a little bit more than halfway down. We had said at the very top of this page, on the top line of this page, that if we have three coins, one on top of the other, then chayav lahachris. Intuitively, we might know that it's clear that there was some chachma to how this was put down. If you see a neat stack of quarters, obviously someone put it there in a masudr dikawe. Uh, whenever, this is one of the arguments that Rabbi Kellerman talks about in his book called Permission to Believe, but believing in a Kaddish Baruch Whenever you see wisdom, it means that someone did that thing. So when you see something that's misudar, Seder doesn't happen in a vacuum. The world works, ask the chemist. It's entropy and enthalpy. The world gets messier. It doesn't get cleaner. So when you see three quarters stacked in a row, that's a sign of someone doing something. Chayav lahachriz. But like halacha always does, it gives very detailed parameters. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Magdala. Uh, sound familiar? Magdala? Mm -hmm. Okay, just a second. Anyways, the Gemara says, Bahu mm -hmm. What? It's called Magdala because it's Bahu Sha'asuyin can be Gnolin. No, I do not believe you. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Magdala. That is his name. You're saying without his name is because of his shita? What? Without the doubt. Hold on, what, I, what does it say, Dad? Migdala. Okay. And, uh, but is his name Migdala? Or is it just a... But was he named that way because of the shita that he just was about to say? Yeah, I mean... Sounded like you made that up, actually. <laughs> So does Divrei David, Divrei David, being published in 2025. What? Yeah. Art scroll? What is it? Can you read it, please? What is it called, though? That's why I have no specific place. Maritz Chiyos. We therefore suggest that the Zemara was listed in Migdala from the Zemara Migdala Tower, because it's really this one stack of leaves. Mecha Tesi. I don't see this at some point in my life. I was going with the Mary Magdalene approach. I, you guys took a totally different approach than I did. So. No, that's 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 Mary Magdalene Sayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah. <laughs> that terrifying Gemara. I don't even remember it anymore. Don't worry about it. You know, yesterday we said that people who are the wrong person. What? He being... misunderstood the instructions. Yeah. Like so going to jewel. Yesterday, yesterday we had that Gemara that said that uh, the simon of a Talmud Chacham is when you ask them if they know Masechta and they say, "I don't know it." So I'm just telling you now, I don't know it. I'm just telling you, but it's not humility. I push it, don't remember. So, <laughs> hey, you stay. You stay at Texas House. I'll back up for you. I didn't stay at Texas House. I didn't even go to Texas. It's one of the three things you're allowed to lie about. Oh, yeah. You were very true. worked up about that. I know, seriously. It's, it's true. It bothers me. For good reason. No, 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 it bothers it's, me. It's, it's, yeah. It needs, it needs time. It needs, it needs time. time. Yeah, there, Rashi. Okay, it says the Gemara Amar Vitzchak Migdala Vuhusha Asuyan Ke Migdalin. That when do we say that the three coins, one on top of the other, are Chayav Lahachris? That's when they're built like a tower. And the Brisa validates four lines before the Y lines, Tanya Nami Hachi Matza Maos Mefuzaros. If coins are spread out, Hare Elu Shalom, they're all yours. Asuyan Ke Migdalin. If they're built like towers, Chayav Lahachris. Ve'elu Hain Asuyan Ke Migdalin. How do we define coins that are stacked like a tower? Shlosha Matbein. Ze al gav ze. And the Gemara points out a stira in inference, not a stira within the text of it, but there's a stira in inference within the Brisa last short line, Haguva Kasha. Amris, you first said Matamos Mefuzaros, which implies, uh, which, and the halach is Hare Elu Shelo, which impri, implies Ha Mishal Chafe Shal Chufe Chayav Lahachri. So we have three stages. We have Mefuzarin, coins are scattered everywhere, not touching each other. That's one extreme of the bell curve. 
The other side is we have a tower. And in between, we have coins that are stacked on each other, like they're barely touching each other. You got a quarter over here, a dime over there, they, whatever. It says the Gemara, the middle category is, is called Meshal Chafei Shal So the, the, if the Reisha says that Mefuzaros are Hare Elu Shalo, that implies that if they're partially touching one another, that Chayav Lahachris. But a Masefa, in the, in the end of that little Brisa we just learned, was it a Brisa? Yeah. At the end of that brisa, asuin kimigdal and chayv lahachris are meshal chafei shal chufei harei lushalo. So again, a stira and inference. So therefore, the Gemara says Tana kol she'ein asuin kimigdal and mifuzaros karlu. Very sharp. Is that the only way we have a migdal is if they're stacked neatly? Nothing else is called a migdal. So therefore, by a migdal you're chayv lahachris. And if the coins happen to be touching one another, it's like playing fifty-two card pickup. There might be some cards touching each other. But that doesn't mean that the kid didn't throw the whole deck across the room. They did. It's chaos. And because it's chaos, you cannot view that as a simon. That's all considered mefuzaros karilu. Amr Chanina lo shanu ela shel shlosha melachim. We're only talking about of three kings, of three different types of coinage. Aval shamelech echad eno chayav lahachriz. But if it's three coins of the same denominations, of the same... Uh, of the same coinage, of the same country, whatever, you're, uh, you don't have to be machers. Hey, chidami, what's the case? If it's built like a tower, then who cares? We still should say that because it's migdal, you should be chayav lahachris. And if it's not built like a tower, then who cares if it's a uh, different malachim? If you're going to say it, this is what it should say. Loshanu, echad kein malachim. What we're talking about is when the coinage is really like Melech Echad, but it's actually from three different Melechim. What does this mean? Skip the parentheses, eight lines from the bottom of Hechidami. It's built like a tower. Look at how specific the Gemara gets in order to say that your Chayv Lahachr is on a tower. Revicha Tata, the widest of all of the coins is on the bottom. Let's call that the quarter. Umetzia ila, and the nickel is the middle quarter. Again, diameter is bigger. The zuta, the dime or the penny, then the vizuta ilave iluya, the the smallest ilave uh, metzia. It's on the it's on top of the smallest uh, on the of the middle one. So they're stacked in width order, right? You're building like a ziggurat is effectively what it would have looked like in older times, the step buildings. Did you see this whole thing about uh, Migdal Bavel? Fascinating. Fascinating. They found what they believe was Migdal Bavel. And they, yeah, the, they found the structure of the building. And uh, they brought in architects and computerized the possibilities of what could have been. And they found that the building was, however tall it was, was made out of mud brick, which really isn't huge integrity. But they, based on the integrity of the bricks, they built a model and said that the only way Migdal Bavel could have existed was to be built as a ziggurat, which is a very large bottom platform, and then another inner platform, and then another inner platform. And they actually found it... Says, says what? Yeah, so why, why can't that be a mud brick? It's a brick. It's a brick. I don't know, it's a brick. I don't know what a levena is. What do you... Why? It it was. It was. Oh, yeah. Man. They're kiln dried bl bricks. Yeah. 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 Pasha, yeah. Something. There is. There is. And the location based on Psukim. I'm being... specifically that. Oh, they didn't over time. Meaning wow. what they what they found now was like just yeah, over the even their, kilns yeah. even their kilns weren't as hot as ours, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Huh? It's theory that it's like some kind of spaceship. Spaceship? Yeah. That wasn't the theory that I saw. I watched it on the Smithsonian. They have a, they have a whole thing. A fascinating, fascinating. Yeah. Paramount Plus. Oh, that's uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, maybe the History Channel. It was a History Channel, probably. I don't know. I saw, like, I didn't see it on that station. I saw it on, like, a side place. Oh, I'll share a link with you if I can find it. Anyways, it was really fascinating just to verify some, not that we need the verification, but it was really fascinating history. What are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about ziggurats, coins. Okay, that's what the Gemara says. Okay, da'amrinan anuche anchinhu. Because when they're put down in that order, so then, obviously, the guy put it there. Aval shal melech echa, the kulu ki But when all three coins are the same, three quarters, three nickels, three dimes, afal gav de manche ahadade, even though they're stacked one on top of the other, hare elu shelo. There we don't say chayav you can keep those. So let's just talk halacha l'maysa. 
If I find three quarters, I can keep them. If I find a quarter followed by a nickel, followed by a dime, chayav l'hachris. The nafkamina between those two things is the din deoraisa v'ashalas abeda. <laughs> so says the brisa, which again, is such a nuance in halacha. It's beautiful how, how nuanced halacha can get and uh, all the way down to a din deoraisa. That's what the Gemara says. Elu shelo. Why is it that if they're all the same size that we should assume that uh, they belong to, uh, that you can keep them? Because Amar isramuye isrami v'hadei adadi nafel. They all fell that way. I don't know. <laughs> Who's the statistician in the room? If you drop three coins 10,000 times, how many times will they fall stacked one on top of the other? <laughs> or let's call it one in 10,000, <laughs> but enough to, that the threshold is low enough that we would say, <laughs> that it's no longer the mitzvah of Hashavah Saveda. This is the frustrating parts of Daf Yomi. We play the numbers. What does it play the numbers? But you need a you need a, a reasonable minority. But it's not even about playing the numbers. It's just the physical structure of it just doesn't lend itself. Dropping three coins. Nafkumina is whether it was left there or whether right. it was left there. Oh, so you're saying that's since exactly it's my point. The, right. the indicator right. of seder right. means that someone put it there. Right. Who cares what order the coin? No, it's not pretty like a tower. Yeah, who cares if it's as big a rat, if the dime is on the bottom and the quarter's on the top? When you see it's, Seder... It's not physically impossible yeah. that, it would, yeah. that it would come in any type of way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lucky for us, we have Rav Yochanan. It says the Gemara, five lines from the bottom of Rav Yochanan, Amar Afilu Shal Melech Echad Nami Machris. <laughs> Says the Gemara, he doesn't agree. He he feels that if you have a stack of any kind, he's like, no. What are you talking about? Like that that's an indicator that someone put it there. Then you have to be machers. My machers minion. The Gemara says you have to be machers the number of coins. Says the Gemara, my area tlasa afilu train. Why three? You should even be able to say two. So says the Gemara, difficult answer. Amar Ravina tiva machers. That is the answer as to why. We have to say a minimum of three and not two. I don't fully understand this. Rashi says three lines from the bottom. Matbeos, Matsasi, I found some coins. Hilkach, Tre, Lav, Simonahu, Demiut, Matbeos, Bays. You guys got to guess what? how many coins. In other words, you say I left coins out there, right? Why can't it be so, two? No, it's like this. Tex comes and says, Ooh, uh, I left five coins. And you say, no, it wasn't five. Uh, but the minimum guess is two. There's for sure two. We know there's two. You gave away the secret when you said in plural, my bay. Oh, Why is two any more likely the real the real answer than that, three? Because you gave you gave it away. I just gave you the minimum. Right. I didn't give you the reality. You gave it away. You gave what, away. What if it's taka? What if it's taka two? Yeah. But David, but that means that if it is in fact two, hare elu shalom. Right. But three establishes that you have some knowledge that isn't just listening to Bill's words. I think that's what Rashi is saying. You already gave away that it's two. When he says three, well, there's a good chance he's got some knowledge. Except for... But what if it's actually two? Oh. It's a problem. Yeah. It's not even a mitzvah do rice anymore. Then it's a re'elu shalom. Yeah. You're not even chayel yeah. ha'afr. Yeah. The concern of miut shtayim can't be the reason why there's no mitzvah of Hashavah two. Yeah. two why? Because you can't do a problem. Why can't you do a problem? Okay, your mind you just gave away the answer of it's two. I don't understand. Two it. is I one of wrong. any any set of it's millions wrong. of answers. The answer what she's saying. You gave away the answer that you already gave a hint. I agree with you what you're saying. You that it's not one, it's at least two. I agree that's what Rashi's saying. I totally agree with you. But the fact that Rashi's argument is that because the word... Because... Yeah, the Gemara's argument is that, well, two is the obvious minimum, so therefore, no hachraza. I understand the what. I don't understand the why. I mean, I, you know, the problem is you're a very um, judicious person. You, you like things to be correct. So I just lost the coins, you'd like to see him get it back. If I lose two coins, yeah. uh, according to this approach, I'd like to see yeah. anybody get it. When of course, no, I could understand why one coin is not. I could understand. I could also understand why three coins are not. But we're talking about stacked coins, so maybe that's part of it. By the way, maybe that's part of it because for two to be stacked, 
is much easier than for three to be stacked. The good Rashi doesn't say that. Rashi doesn't say that. What text? No, I was going to say, like, so at this point, if you have a roll, it's much different also. Because that falls down. A roll of coins? Roll of coins. No, that's one. That's one item. One? Yeah. Yeah, the Seder of the coins is not because of you. It's because of the bank. It's not, I presume. Well, obviously, money. It doesn't have the same conditions. I, I, I do hear your question, absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's yep, that's what he says. That's what it says. Let's continue. We're never going to finish. Yeah. Boy, revere me. It's too, too much. What if the what if the lost items have a shape to them? Kashir, like the circle. Uh, mahu, kishura, like a line. Mahu, kechatsuba, which is some kind of triangle shape. That's what Rashi says. Kigimel, ragle, kankan. Mahu, kisulam, mahu. What if they're stacked like a ladder? All of the different ways that coins can fall. Says the Gemara, we don't really know, but Pshot Mehachad, at least one of them we know. If you were to place toothpicks, pieces of wood, small wood, um, small pieces of wood between them, the note Lambivasachas, and you pick up, pick them all up at once, then Chayab Lahachers. I don't know what the Gemara means. That's what it says. Kol shilam machnes and Rashi says v'chi havu kisulam nitlim b'vasachas. When they're structured like some kind of ladder, you can pick up more than one coin at a time. So so says the Gemara. Says the Gemara. Boy Ravashi turning to the top of chavavam chav hem or base ke'avne base kulis, which was some type of avodah zara. That's what Rashi says. Rashi says ke'avne base kulis mar kulis v'hi shem avodah zara. How do we view base kulis? Titania, matzah, mos, mufuzaros. If the coins are all spread out, hare elu shalom, pashat, that you can keep those because there's no simit of any kind. However, ka'avne base kulis, chayav lahachris. Ve'ilu ahein avne base kulis, achas mikan, ve'achas mikan, ve'achas al gabehen. Two of them next to each other and a third hovering over both of them, which is what it seems to be the Gemara's explanation. Uh, that's what exactly what Rashi says on the second line. Achas mikan v'achas mikan v'ashlishis chetzia al zevach. It's a it's a brick layout. It's a it's a it's a brick layout that we have on our homes. So, so will Avodah Zara you have to announce this is not a problem? We're not talking about Avodah Zara. We're asking if there's a, an obligation to be machres if the structure is a structure that that Avodah Zara uses. You didn't do it for Avodah Zara. What you found is likely not for Avodah Zarah, but it mimics it. Tanu Rabban and the rabbis have taught us, Hamotzei Sela Beshuk, you find a coin in the marketplace in Mitzol Chavero, the Amar Lo, Shalihu, so if Chadasha, he, if Nironi, he, if Shal Melech Ploni, he, with all these uniquenesses, we don't care. Lo Amar Klum. So again, we found a regular coin and the, your friend is coming to say, ah, it's mine. I got the new 2024 minted coin. It has a picture of this president and on the back it has this kind of eagle. Below Ode, Ella, Afilu Shmo Kasu Valeha. Even if the guy's name, this guy's got problems if he's labeling his quarters, but if he writes his name on it, still Loa Marklum. The Fisha Ain Sim in the Madbea. Hard stop. There's no such thing there's no such thing as a simon on an individual coin. You spent it already. I gave you my cord. I gave it to Gerald. He went to 7-Eleven and it says, Phil care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because there's no such thing as a simon on a coin. Conversation over. Next mission, it's about 10 lines down. Let's say if you find something, which is a fence that's made out of reeds. Oh, Achar Hageder, or after a regular fence. And what do you find? Gozlos Mekushar, and you find birds that are tied down. Their wings are tied or something like that, as we'll soon see. Oh, Bishvilan Shebesados, or they're found on the pathways of a field. Look at this middle of the road language, right? It's not Hare Elu Shalo. It's also not Chayav Lahachris. It's in between, twilight. And the Gemara then continues, Matza Kli Ba'ashba, we saw this out of context earlier. If you find a Kli, you find something chashuv in the garbage, Yimichusa lo yigabo, same language as the birds, don't touch it if, it's, if it is covered. But Yimigula, no telemachris, if in fact it's revealed, then you should announce it, then we have a din of Hashava Saveda. The Mishnah opens a quarter of the way down, my taima, 
The reason why we say don't touch it is because somebody obviously tried to hide it. And if you take it, because then you're ruining whatever simon is there. At least this way we have a makom, we have a place, I put it in this bag, I put it in that, in that dumpster. Leave it alone. When there is a case scenario where we can glean that it's possible that the bailim will return, we should not pick it up. That's not where we have the din of Ashava Saveda. Ashava Saveda is only in a case where it's clear to us that there's a lost item. Why would we say with these birds that have their wings tied, why would we say that that's considered lo yigabo? And have a kesher simana. We should have the mitzvah of Ashava Saveda. As we've spoken about, there are a lot of knots that are uh, very unique. Everybody ties the birds this way. Everyone who deals with birds clips their wings the same way. What about the place? These birds are hopping around. Their wings are clipped, but their feet still work, so they're not in the same place where they started. Your makom is a moving target, and therefore makom can't be a simon. And if it's true that they're moving around, then alma then it should be mutter to take them. You can't tell one duckling from another. You can't tell one chicken from another. It could have been from anywhere in the world. Oh, now we're getting a new halachic principle. You're right. It could be from the world, but it also could be that this guy hid it in a particular place, but they moved a little bit. It's a safek hinuach, safek of whether or not they placed it in the right place. And then we learn a yesod, one we're going to see later in this Masech, then 10, 11, blot. When we're dealing with a case of safek kinuach, that we're not sure if it was placed in a particular place, really you should not take it, but if in fact you do take it, then lo yachzir. Whenever we see these din bidiyeved, the din bidiyeved is really the din. Uh, we have a din of that we try to avoid making things complicated, but the dieved really it is harei shalom, but we try to be makbid. We said that if a kli was found in the garbage and it was covered, don't touch it. And if it was revealed, no tell The Gemara says, not so simple. Or in Minhu, we have a brysa. If you have a kli that's hidden in the garbage, no telumachris, shekein derech ashba lefanos. That's a huge stira, because here we said it's tamun, it's hidden, and it says no telumachris. In our Mishnah, what did it say? Lo yigabo. So how do we deal with this seeming stira? If something that's hidden in the garbage, our Mishnah says that uh, lo yigabo, and this brisa says no telumachris. The difference is the mitzvah of saveda, yes or no. So the Gemara says, Amar Rav Zved, three, three quarters of the way down, approximately, lo kasha. One is talking about large things like barrels and clothing. These are very, very small, tiny items. Those are things you shouldn't touch. It's However, these small things, they're easy to accidentally throw out. I have one spoon left in my milchik drawer from my original set. I am certain that my children have thrown out the other 11 I have no doubt. Maybe it was me, but I doubt it. But the kids, they're not mavchen bein zelazet. So when it comes to this, this is the distinction the Gemara makes. If you see a couch where it shouldn't be, lo yigabo. Okay, we know the alley is the place where you get rid of couches. But if you see a fork, a metal fork in a garbage can in an alley, chayv l'hachris. That's a shava That's the distinction. That's the I realize this doesn't happen. It's an Aveda. It's an Aveda. You didn't know that you, it's Yerushalom Midas. You didn't know that you threw it out. You didn't throw it out on purpose. You thought it was, you know, on Shabbos, we use these like silver looking plastic spoons. So I took all the silver looking stuff and tossed it. That's not Yerush. That's Yerushalom Midas. And Yerushalom Midas is Lo Havi Yerush. And, and therefore, if I find it, there's a mitzvah of Ashavas Aveda. Now, Papa Amar, a different answer. See, the steer between the Mishnah and the Brisa, don't worry, it's all talking about big items. One's talking about a garbage that's taken out every day. And one's talking about a garbage which is not taken out all, uh, regularly. Says the Gemara, wait one second. If you have Ashba that does get thrown out, that's an Aveda Midas. You're getting rid of it. That can't be. 
Ella says the Gemara, it really is a garbage that isn't typically thrown out. And one uh, changes their mind or whatever, the government, the, the trucks show up one day when you're not expecting it and they do so. So Bishlam al Papa says the Gemara, I understand Rav Papa's approach to say that both the Bryce and the Mishnah are talking about Kubi Vikasi, these larger items, Shekane Derech Ashba Lifnos. That makes sense. El the Rav Zvid, my, what does the Bryce mean according to Rav Zvid, where Rav Zvid distinguishes between large items and small? My Shekane Derech Ashba Lipanos. That doesn't even make any sense. How then do you distinguish, distinguish between big items and small items? So says the Gemara, well, he says we're talking about a place where it's normal to throw out small utensils. Okay, that brings us to a new Mishnah. We'll uh, really push now to learn at least the next Amud, and then uh, tomorrow we can do another uh, another big push. It says the Gemara, a new Mishnah, five lines from the bottom on Chavheim at Beis. The Gemara says, mm -hmm. If you find a lost item in a heap of stones with a kosel yashan in an old wall, we'll see what old wall it's referring to. They're all yours. If you find it in a new wall, let's say there's a hole between my yard and your yard. It's an intentional hole, right? Just so we can have some airflow, whatever the case may be, so the wall doesn't fall. So, on Texas side of the wall, let's say the wall is six inches thick. So from the six inch depth mark of the wall toward Tex, everything is hid, his and everything else is mine. If I rent my house to someone else, Rabbi Resnick equated this to an Airbnb. If you then, then find an item, if you find a lost item, not, not the picture frames they put, you can't take things off the wall. That's Geneva. But if you have an item that doesn't seem like a wallet, again, something that has no simon, let's not use a wallet. You find some cash there, just push it, pick it up and put it in your wallet. There's nothing morally or halachically wrong with that. It is yours. All right, let's talk about the first part of the Mishnah. It says the Gemara Tana, the reason why in a kosel Yashem we say Harei'elu Shalom is because maybe the people who lived there before the Jews, the Amorites, maybe it was theirs. Says the Gemara, Atu Emorim Mitzane, Yisrael Lo Mitzane. Only the Amorites would hide things. The Jews don't stick things in their walls to hide things. People probably stick a lot of things in their walls. Not today as much because our walls are closed for the most part. So it says the Gemara, no, Lotzricha, how do we know what was the meaning that it belonged to Amorites? The Gemara says on the top of Chavav and Aleph, the Shasich Tvein. Rashi says at the top of the page, Ha'elu Chaluda, there was a lot of Ras Chaluta Raba, the Kule Hai Lo Shavik Lu. That, there's no way. There's no way that this could be the case. Obviously, it's old. A good friend of mine who I uh, did my master's program with bought a desk and he found inside the desk that he bought seventy thousand dollars in cash. That was your friend, yeah. Rabbi Noach Mirov. Yeah, he, he's a rav in Arizona. He's in Shoshan Shul in Avas oh, really? Torah. Yeah, he's the assistant rabbi there. So he made the news for for going lift the Mishura Sadin. Huge kid of but that was lift the Mishura. I'm I'm saying he's a tzaddik of a man, but it was lift the Mishura Sadin. You're not you're not obligated to do that. Huge, huge. Yeah, that, that one made the rounds. That one made the rounds. So in this case, the Shasich Tfei, it was so obvious that it was so rusted. It's like finding a, a gold thing in an attic in a house that you bought from someone uh, and they lived there for 80 years. You lived there for 50 years and it looks 130 years old, Pasha. So that's what this is talking about. Tapa Chavav Amaral of Pekosel Chadash. We said in regards to a wall that's new between me and text, the wall, wall's one foot thick, the six, the six, thick, the six inches that are to Texas side. If we find an item there, they're his. Vilachutz um, is shallow, and mechzav v'lifnim shel balabais. The inner six inches belongs to me. Amar Avashi, this is ridiculous. How do you hold a knife? Sakina basar kata. You always hold a knife by its handle. Huh. You what are these things called? Just Maracas. what Maracas. maracas. You don't hold maracas backwards, right? You always hold them the right way. So the Gemara is bothered by this because Ravashi says if it's true that Sakina's basar kata that you always hold a knife by the handle, the kisa basar shnatzeha and a bag you hold it by the strings by the laces. The ella masnis and the ketani mechetiv elachut shilom mechetiv lefim shel balabayis. Who cares which side of the wall it's on for me and Tex? 
Belech ze ikata lagav, ikata levar. Is the handle on Phil's side, in which case Phil put it there, or is the handle on Tex's side, in which case Tex put it there, or Ishnatseha, are the laces legav, Ishnatseha levar? That's such a great question, right? Like, what's the tendency of people? We don't hold knives by the blade. That is not normal. And we don't, the laces thing, we could argue how people carry things, fine. But the blade is a good example. People hold knives that you teach your kids when they're little. You hold it by the knife, point it down. That's how we raise our kids. Whenever you're, you never run with an iron, all the clum, but you hold it by the handle. Says the Gemara, uh, no, Masnisen the Udra Vinaska. We're talking either about a garment or about a, a piece of silver where, where there is no handle. That's what Tex and I are splitting. That's what we're going to figure out. And Tana, the Mishnah says, Im Hayakosal Mimula Mehen. So then Chulkin. Let's say that we find uh, a hundred, uh, let's say we have five bars of gold, right, between me and Tex and the wall. So the Allah is Chulkin, says the Gemara Pshita. That should be obvious. It leans in one direction. It's sloped. Right? So if it's sloped from, from my side to Texas side, there is a hole in the wall, but it's leaning this way from me to text. If that's true, then I might have thought that it was on my side and it rolled down to text. We should factor in the slope. That we don't. And even if there is a slope, Tex and I will split whatever is in there. Again, under the assumption that there's no handle, right? The handle was a good argument. If there is a handle, so then we assume that whichever side the handle is on is the owner. At the two dots, eight lines down. And we said in the Airbnb case, you get to keep whatever is there. Says the Gemara, who was the last person who lived there? Why do you get to keep it? The Airbnb turns over so quickly. Okay, they didn't do a good job sweeping under the bed. And you found a pile of cash. That you get to keep it. It should be the Basar Basar. We go to the last guy. After all, Milo Tanan. This is a Mishnah in Psachim and Shkalim. If you find money in front of those who sell animals, Laolam, Maiser. We have to assume it's Maiser. If it's Baharabayis, the broader place of Harabayis, so then the Gemara says, that is chulin. Over Yerushalayim, b'sharim of Yerushalayim, it depends. B'sharim Moshe Shana chulin. B'shas haregel kol meiser, ha kol meiser. All right. The Amar of Shemaya Bar Zeira. My timea. Why is this true? Because hol v'shoke Yerushalayim asuin lis kabed b'chol yom. Because it was typical back in the day that people would clean the the streets in Yerushalayim every day. Al mamrin an kamoi kamoi. Also, the first people obviously must have left. Vahani achrini ninhu. Pasha, that should be no different than the Airbnb. Hachanami, kama kama ozal, bani de basrohu. How can you say that just because you're renting an Airbnb that if you find something, hare elu shalo, it should be basar basra. You should be pushing to see who the previous owners were. Says the Gemara, Amar reish lakish mishum bar kapara kagon shaso pundak l'shlosha Yisrael. The problem is that we had three Yidin who lived there. Shmami no, says the Gemara, if it's true, the three Jews lived there. And that's why we're having a problem, because we don't know who to give it to. Yeah, of course. We don't know who to give it to. So says the Gemara, Shmami no, that implies, going back a couple of blot, Halacha Krabshim ben Lazar Afilu Barov Yisrael, that we even would have a case scenario where we would say, Hare Elu Shalom, even when the majority of the people are Jews. So says the Gemara, you're right, we need to change our answer. Eight, nine lines from the bottom. And we're talking about Goyim who lived there prior. And you're right. Typically, we go Basar Basra. We go according to the last person who lived there, but not when the last people who lived there are Akum. Rav Nachman Amar, Rabba Baravua, Rav Nachman Amar, Rabba Baravua, Afilu Tema Lishlosha Yisro. We could even say it's three Yidin. My Taima, because Ahud and Nafal Mine, Miyaesh. Maymar, we assume that there was Yeush. Why? Maymar Amar Michti Inishach Rina Lohava Bahade Elahani. The people who lived there, I already spoke to all of them. Amre Kamayu Kamazimne. I told them numerous times, Lehadruli, Velohadruli. I said, please give me back my item if you find it. They said we didn't find it. Bahashta Lehadru. And now they're going to give it back. They would have given it back already. It must be that they were there to steal it. That's how the Gemara is uh, is okim that case. Let's just finish up a little bit. Lazar of Nachman, the time it Amar of Nachman, Ra'asela, turning to the top of. We're getting there. 
Chavav Mubez, Shenafal Mishnayim Chayav Lahachzir. If something falls from two people, you have to return it. My time, because the Hudin Nafal Minei Lo Miyayish. There would be no Yeush in that case, because Memar Omar Michdi Inishachrin Lo Hava Bahadoy Elahai. Uh, there's only me and that other guy. So Nikitna lay, I can force him to make a shvuah, ve'amina lay, onto the shikalte. But Bishlosha, if there are three people, enochayab lahachzir, because you can't have them make a shvuah because someone's going to lie. My time, huh? because hahu de nafal minei vaday miyayish, in a case where I lose something and there's a, more than more than one other more than one other person, there's two other people, a total of three, for sure there's going to be yeish, because Amar, the argument is mechli trey, Someone's going to lie. So therefore, if there's three people, then it wouldn't work out. And Omar Rava, This is only true when there isn't a Shava Pruta L'Kol Chad V'Chad. Aval Is Be Shava Pruta L'Kol Chad V'Chad. Chayav L'Hachzir. My time. Why is it that if there's enough money for everyone, a pruta per person, that we have to return it? Because, says the Gemara, Amor Shutfenin, or perhaps they're actually partners, and therefore the monies were were belonging to all of them, below Miyasha. And says the Gemara, Ika da Amri, some say this a little bit differently. Omar Rava, Afal Gav de Lesbe, Shava Shte Prutos, Chayav Lahachzir. Even if there's three people and only two prutas, we still have to give it back. My time, but because why can't they be partners over two prutas? Who cares? Amor Shutfeninu. And one guy just was mechel on the other person. Yeah, let's stop right here at Amar Rava, and then we will uh, we will pick up tomorrow. We're one third of the way down on Chaf Vav Amid Beis. That's where we'll pick up from tomorrow. Wishing you all a beautiful night.